exciting day for the, uh, the Blue Jackets organization. That's, that goes without saying, and I can't emphasize that enough, but I think it's a great day for the city of Columbus as well. And, uh, you know, to uh, get a player of this caliber is going to make us instantly better and make better uh, players better around them, which is uh, really important in, in the culture of a hockey team, that you have players that lead by example, and, and uh, you know, he's done it throughout his career, and, and um, we couldn't be happier to have him here, so. Lars, you want to get it? Good. Now we'll open it up for questions. Go to uh, Jared in the back. Uh, Jared Smalley from NBC in Columbus. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. The, the first question is obvious. Why? Why Columbus? See, there were there were options for you, obviously, for a number of, of avenues, uh, including where you were previously. What made this offer the one that attracted you? Yeah, um, not so much the offer. I mean, I I've gotten to play here many times, and every time I play here, it's it's a lot of fun to play here, you know, the fans are into it and, um, you know, they, they got a lot of buzz there in the arena, so I was, I was really excited about that. Um, they got a good young group here, um, you know, uh, I, I think that attracted me a little bit too and, uh, you know, me and my wife thought it was a, a really good fit for us. Uh, we looked at some, some other options, but I think this was the best one for us personally and where we're at in our, in our life and uh, it just made the most sense. Go to Bob, back right. Thanks, John. Uh, Johnny, Bob Kendrick, ABC6. Congratulations on making a great decision. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get used to the cannon eventually. Uh, Pardon? Uh, just curious about um, what happens in locker rooms around the league regarding Columbus. What do you think the reputation is? Because of the narrative here that big players don't want to come here. What are you actually hearing uh, in locker rooms? I, I mean... I wanted to come here. I mean, this was always a place circled on, you know, on my list. And uh, uh, I'm not really sure about any other players. I don't know. You know, in locker rooms, we're, we're not talking about why people don't want to come to Columbus. It's not a topic um, in the locker room, to be honest with you. But um, I, for me, I just heard so many great things from past former players. And um, it made me feel really comfortable with my decision to come here. Question. Back center, Craig Murs. Craig Murs, NHL.com. Johnny, what are you looking for in a center? And as you look at the Blue Jackets roster, what do you know about the centers here? Yeah, it's obviously, uh, you know, something I'm, I'm excited about is, uh, you know, playing with a you know, new group of guys. Obviously, uh, not coaches, that's coaches, uh, you know, his spot to decide where everyone's playing. but. Um, you know, they got some, you know, really skilled forwards up front. And, uh, um, you know, Liney's got probably one of, the, one of the best shots in the league, probably after Ovechkin, the way he snaps the puck and gets it off so quickly. Uh, you know, those are, you know, those are players you want to play with. I, I consider myself kind of a playmaker. You know, I try to move the puck a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, I get in trouble sometimes passing too much. My, my dad always gives me a hard time. He says, shoot the puck, shoot the puck. But, you know, I like passing. And, uh, you know, when you have a, a scorer like that, I mean, uh, you may want to dish it a little bit more. Go ahead, Bailey. Bailey Johnson from the Columbus Dispatch. You mentioned that it being a young group here attracted you. What about that attracted you to come here? Yeah, I think there's a lot of potential. Um, you know, I, uh, I thought it was, it was a good spot for me personally. I think, you know, we can have a lot of success here. I think it's, uh, um, like I said, it was somewhere that I had circled on my list for, for a while now. And, it's not only from what I've heard about the city and where you live, but you know they've got good players on this team too, and and uh, 
um, I'm really looking forward to you know jumping in with this group. Uh, I've heard a lot of great things. You know, they're they're close knit group, and you know that's that's who you want to play with. You know, guys who get along in the locker room and love coming to the rink and working together every single day. And uh, it's just a, a healthy environment to be around, and you know that's uh, that's exciting to me. Hey Johnny, Aaron Portsline with the Athletic. Um, obviously, this is where you wanted to be. It was your right to choose wherever you wanted to go. Has it has it hit you yet since you've signed? Just how meaningful it is to the people here that you picked this place. How how much they needed something like this to happen. Is is that sunk in? Are you getting a vibe for that? Yeah, I mean, I I got here an hour ago, so but the the warm welcomes were were pretty uh, pretty special. I mean. Me and my wife had a smile on her face from the moment we stepped in the door with, you know, everyone, uh, you know, being so, you know, nice and not welcoming. And, um, and I hope uh, I hope people are excited, you know, and I'm excited. How many of your new teammates have you heard from at, at this point already? Yeah, I've heard from about five or six of them. Uh, I had so many texts and calls last night and so many random Columbus numbers, so I'm trying to call different people back and, Checking my voicemail. I'm not sure who I'm calling. So it was uh, it was a big hectic there for an hour or so, but I kind of you know slowed down a little bit and finally got to talk to everyone and you know texted some of the guys and uh, um, everyone. Like I said, very welcoming and, and we're excited. Ken Johnson said this morning he wanted to be private and very careful in his conversation with you about 13, because you're a childhood idol of his. I want to know if that, a if that makes you feel old, but also what did you have to give up to get 13 from him, if anything? Yeah, yeah, I guess it makes you feel a little bit older. Um, but no, I, I to be honest, I remember talking to everyone right after I signed, and I was like, I don't need 13. He can have 13. I feel bad. I don't want to take his number. I'll get a fresh new start, and um, you know, I'm gonna have to definitely take him out to a couple dinners and. Uh, um, you know, it was, it was very nice, you know, for him to do that, and he didn't have to, but, uh, you know, it just shows you, you know, the type of players are surrounded around here, you know, guys that are willing to do those little things and not expect anything in return, and, uh, but, you know, I'm going to have to, you know, bring them out a few times. Jared, back right. Uh, Yarmo, just some, some background for us on the negotiation with Johnny's agent, with how long this process has been underway when you had a notion that maybe you might be onto something here, can you walk us through the development of how this came together? And then the back part of that question is, financially there's some things to work out, obviously, with the rest of your roster. Can you walk us through that building process, how you'll do it? Well, when, when we realized that this was um, possible and, and, and realistic, that we could get this done yesterday in the, in the afternoon, we, we got to work. We, we were excited. and. and you know, we had to crunch numbers and look at different things, and and we all agreed that we just can't pass on an opportunity like this with with a player of his caliber wanting to come here, and and obviously he was you know wanted by a lot of teams, and 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 you know we've watched him I don't know how many times, and with our scouting staff, and and, and you know continued talks with his agent, and and um, you know it came came through. Fairly quickly after we realized that we both wanted this, and and uh, you know there was a deal to be made, and and um, then we signed it. Um, yeah, we have a salary cap that we need to work around, but um, I'm confident that we can get all the work done that we need to get done. And and um, you know after this press conference, I'll go back to my office. Let's <laughs> go to Brian Hedger in the back row center. Hey, Armo. Um, what does this signing do? You've been talking about the reset process for almost two years now. Uh, you guys have meticulously laid this thing out, you know, trying to get draft picks and things like that. What does this signing do for the right reset process? Like, what does it, uh, how does it affect that? Well, we call it a reset for a reason, and it's totally different than talking about rebuild, and it's, it's uh, supposed to be quicker that way, and we felt that with our group that we had, uh, uh, realistic opportunity to turn it around fairly quickly which I think we proved to a lot of people last season already even though we did not make the playoffs but um, this gives us a, a huge boost obviously so we're excited about it and I, I think again well, you know we're very careful about the uh, the players that we we uh, try to sign uh, trade for um, 
because we want to know about the character and their work ethic and, and, and how they fit in the group and, and, and how much they love hockey and you know that's one thing that I kept hearing about Johnny all the time that he's a, he's a, he's a rink rat he just loves hockey loves to practice loves to get better um, puts time in every day to get better as a hockey player that is that's what our group needs um, you know we were usually pretty careful on the, the opening day of the free agency when this opportunity uh, uh, was in front of us we were not careful at all we went right for it um, just kind of following up on that assuming that you can get the the line a situation figured out the the cap and all that kind of stuff when you look at your roster including line a do you see a team that could contend for the playoffs next year? Yeah, I think we go every year. We go with the mindset that we can make the playoffs. Even last year when we didn't make it, or the year before, and, and that mindset's never going to change. Um, we need to grow. We need to get better every day. That's one thing that I've been talking about every time we've gotten together here with you guys. Is that that you know we we want, we want to improve every day. And um, I think we just improved yesterday, and I think that once we get to work in the fall, the, the process continues, and, and we're going to have a good team. Is there an ulterior message as well that comes with this signing? And what I'm re referencing is all the talk that happened in 2019 about the, the guys that left and things like that. Does, is there something with this signing that kind of can, uh, goes against that, I guess you'd say? Uh, I made a comment yesterday that I get a rash every time I hear the negative comments about Columbus, and and it's so unfair because you know we we, uh, we have a great organization, we have a great city, we have an unbelievable facility that would be even better after we get the, through the uh, phase two this summer. It, it'll be uh, it will, we can put it against anybody's facility in the league, no doubt about it, and that unfair perception somehow becomes truth, which it is not. So, uh, you know, it happens in this league that, that players get the right to choose where they want to go. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. And I'm not going to go back to talking about players leaving at 2019. Sometimes players leave, people think they left, but the reality is that we didn't even offer a contract. But you know, we don't talk about that because it would not be professional, and and um, that's that's the way I'm I'm going to keep it in the future too. But Columbus is a great city. We have a great organization. We have a great head coach. We have a good team, and we're going to keep getting better. Who did Jeff hear from? Left? Uh, Johnny uh, Jeff Salota, uh, BlueJackets.com. Uh, Hearing Yermo talk there, that is kind of a, a thing that this organization has really had to wear a lot over the years, and. Um, you kind of asked this a little bit ago, but as you hear um, Yarmo talk about all the great things that are here, just how much did you know about all that kind of stuff when you were coming in? And, and did you kind of see that framework there that really this would be a place that there was a lot there that maybe people may not have realized that they hadn't looked closely at, at this organization? Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I only got to play here once a year. And uh, it was from the hotel back to the rink and then back to the hotel. So I'm, I didn't really, I've never been to Columbus before that. But, you know what? Throughout the summer, you know, I did my homework on, you know, places that I thought were good for me and talked to some, you know, former players. And after hearing some of the things, I mean, I was telling people in there, I was like, after every time I talked to a different person about this city, it seemed like the person I was talking was more excited than the last person I was talking to. And um, like I said, it, it, just, it sounded like a perfect spot for us. And... Uh, you know, we're, we're so excited, and uh, it's going to be a, a special place for us, I think. And it's hard not to like what we've seen already today, so it's been great. And, and some of those guys you mentioned uh, uh, a little bit, some of the guys you know, but just thinking about, I was talking to Sean Corelli earlier, who you played with in World Juniors, and Eric Robinson, you've known growing up. I mean, it really is a place we already have a lot of contacts. How much does that excite you? Were you able to come in and, and have some of those relationships already built? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of guys that I... I played with before and it's it's change is hard sometimes but when you have familiar faces it just makes it so much easier and I was super excited about Columbus but you know after you see some of the guys that you played before you know how you know they are good players and they they help you know your team win games those are guys who you you want to play with and, and go to battle with and uh, you know that, that was exciting as well. <clears throat>
Go to Bailey second, right? I think there's a video that's been making the rounds of you getting a little startled by the cannon last time you were here. Is it safe to assume you're going to make peace with it now that you're here? Yeah, there's a lot of jokes about that already. Um, I'm going to have to get used to that for sure. I've scared me one too many times here, so I'm going to maybe sit in the arena for you know five, ten minutes one day and just let it blast off <laughs> as much as I can to get ready for it. Hey, Johnny, what is your, your message for the people of Calgary? I'm, I'm sure you have great memories of that place. You had a, a long time there. What would you say to them today that may be hurting a bit or a little curious as to why the decision was made? Yeah, I mean, that's something that I was, you know, not going to you know, kind of talk about today. I wanted to just focus on Columbus, and then I was going to, uh, you know, get to that after. But um, Calgary is a special place for me. Uh, I was part of their organization for 12 years. Um, and uh, I loved every time, every second I was there. Um, but for me, I think uh, it was it was just time for me to make a little bit of a change. I think, um, and uh, you know, uh, I, I, I'll leave it at that. But you know, it, it was a special place for me. I loved it there. The fans were great to me, um, and uh, yeah. Jared, back right, Johnny. The, the league is sort of one of those fraternities where players tend to know each other, um, whether they're on the same team or different teams. There's sort of a fraternity in, in environment there for players. How well do you know this roster? Are there certain guys that you have a, a backstory with, some relationship with? Um, is it all new? Uh, can you walk us through some of those relationships that might be pre-existing? Yeah, I mean, uh, mostly a lot of new faces. Um, but there are a handful of guys that I've played with uh, uh, on this roster, and uh, Renski played with the World Championships one year. Um, Gabe Ransom was all last year, and I think he's just a great, great signing. He's such a you know good person and a good person to be around, and a good player too, and protects his teammates, and he does uh, he does a good job with the rink. So, um, but like I said, I mean, there's a few other guys, and but I, I'm excited. I'm excited to to meet the new guys that I haven't played with yet, and see some old familiar faces and uh, and get to work. Brian Hedger, center back. Hey, Johnny. Right here. Uh, Brian Hedger from the Columbus Dispatch. Um, just kind of curious, this is an off-the-wall one a little bit, but uh, during your, your process of kind of checking out Columbus and, and seeing what they had here, how much did you kind of learn or know about the renovations that they're doing, like the locker room stuff and, and all the things that are kind of going on right now? I learned about it today when I was walking in. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it's obviously great to have those things, you know, it, it, but um, for me, that wouldn't make my decision. You know, I'm uh, pretty straightforward, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to play hockey and that's the most important thing and I want to win games and um, it's obviously great to have those things, you know, you, you always love to see that, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really focused on hockey and I want to win and that's the most important thing for me. I'll ask you kind of the same thing I asked uh, Yarmo. Uh, when you look at the, the team that you're about to join uh, with yourself in there, do you feel like this could be a playoff team pretty quick? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, you know, I got to, you know, get used to, you know, new things, you know, how all the systems work and stuff like that. But, I mean, you know, it's hard to make the playoffs in this league. And uh, I've, I've been there before where you're sitting at the bottom of the standings and, you know, it, it's hard to come to the rink and you know go to practice when you know you're you're out of playoffs. So and, and it stings and it hurts and you sit with it all summer and it just eats away at you. And uh, um, but that just gets you ready for next season. And I'm so excited to you know I think we have a good group here. I think you know it's time for me to kind of get familiar with everything and all the new people and stuff like that. And this is a great start you know today. But uh, you know I want to get back there and you know. I'd, then come to Columbus to, you know, check out the views. You know, I came here to win hockey games, and, and, and that's important to me. Anything else from anybody here? Um, Johnny and Yarmo, once they're done, will be done. We won't have time for individuals today. He's got a pretty tight schedule. Johnny and Meredith are flying back this afternoon. So, I last just call. I say one more thing that, you know, I, I, I'd like to thank our ownership. I, I think feel privileged to uh, work for the um, Connell family and, and uh, you know, they're committed to winning, and that's the most important thing for a general manager to uh, to have ownership like that, and for the whole team. 
the whole management group and, and our players that to see that the ownership is committed to winning. They want to win the Stanley Cup. They want to bring the Stanley Cup to Columbus. With that, we're going to take a few questions from Zoom. Um, first, we'll go to Stephen Wino. Go ahead, Stephen. Thanks, Todd. Uh, Yarmar, you've mentioned being careful in free agency before, but does a signing like this make it make it even more important knowing that you have the salary cap space, that you've managed the cap so well to be able to make a move like this? Yeah, yeah. You, you, if, if you didn't have uh, room or potential to make room, you wouldn't have these, this type of opportunities. And, and um, you know, it's, uh, it's not an easy world when, when uh, you have good players. It's a great problem to have if you have too many good players and then time comes, especially in these days when the salary cap's been flat, that something has to give if you, if you want to be under, and you have to be under, you can't be over. So, um, yeah, that's uh, a lot of it is timing too. We, we're going through this process that we've been calling reset, and that's, that's part of the reason why we've had some flexibility, but uh, it's going to get a little tighter now. Uh, Johnny, I, I think you can sense the tone of how big a deal this is in Columbus, and I'm just curious about the responsibility that you have now, you know, in the coming years to be a difference maker. Do you feel that responsibility, and, and what do you think you can do on and off the ice to help this franchise take the next step? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, like you said, I, I always want to be a difference maker on the ice. Uh, you know, that's, you know, kind of been my game throughout my whole career, you know, I want to I want to, you know, find a way to, you know, push our team to be a little bit better and, you know, get that game-winning goal or make a nice play in, in the offensive zone to try to get a goal or a big play in the D zone. But, you know, little things like that, I mean, that's what, you know, makes you a good hockey player. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to, you know, just, uh, you know, working hard, you know, trying to, you know, show uh, maybe some of the younger guys or, or whoever, you know, that, how committed I am to, you know, to trying to win hockey games. Next, we'll hear Francis. Go ahead, David. Hey, Johnny, congratulations on your new deal. Uh, you, you touched on it very briefly on why you decided to leave Calgary, but if I could just press you on a few more details on why you decided to leave Calgary and why it took so long for you to make that tough decision. Yeah, um, it was a tough decision. Uh, I mean, it went right down to probably 11 o'clock the night before free agency where I decided I wasn't going to go back. Um, it was a really hard decision, but, you know, something that me and, and Meredith, we talked about for a long time there. Um, it was difficult, but it was, it was the best for us. And, uh, you know, we were uh, super excited with, you know, being able to sign here in Columbus. We were, uh, you know, like I said before, you know, they were one of the teams that we – we're really interested, and, and when they called, we were uh, we had all smiles uh, yesterday, so it was exciting. Next, we go to Wes Gilbertson. Go ahead, Wes. Johnny, just to, to follow up on, on Eric's question, I'm curious, you know, coming off a career season for you personally, coming off a team that, you know, finished at top of the Pacific Division, can you just expand on what you said earlier and that you decided that now would be a good time for a change? For you, can you just expand on why why that was at this time? Yeah, uh, like I said, I mean, it, it was hard decision. Uh, it's, Calgary was a great place to me and to me and my wife. And um, but uh, you know, talking to my family, talking to Meredith, you know, it was like I said. I mean, it was it was it was the right move for us. And um, I don't know. That's that's all I can really tell you guys. Yeah, Johnny, congratulations. Um, there was a lot of talk when when it came out that you weren't going to go back to Calgary about how, well, Johnny's going to want to go home. And last I checked, Columbus is not exactly home. It's closer than Calgary, but it's not home. How Was there a pull to come further east at all, or was this the place and it, you were just waiting for them to show the interest? Uh like I said, I mean, I've, I've always wanted to play relatively a little bit closer. And, um, you know, I think uh, the East was, you know, I, I grew up here, uh, not in Columbus, but on the East Coast. And, uh, you know, it's somewhere I always wanted to play. And, um, 
I was in Calgary for eight to 12 years there from when I got drafted to when I started playing. And uh, I always uh, you know, kind of dreamed about playing a tad closer to home. But um, I mean, it, it didn't matter where, where I was signing. I think uh, our decision was it was best for us not to go back to Calgary. And, and, uh, and then we decided to figure out what was the best option for us. And uh, Columbus was right up, right up on the top of the list there. And, and no reason on whether it was close to home or not. You know, they were they were a team that I was really excited about. Hey, Johnny, Kobe Mayer from First Ohio Battery. Uh, congrats on the new contract and welcome to Columbus. I was just wondering, um, Eric and Branson talked yesterday about uh, the importance of you know him. He's starting a family and how uh, Columbus appealed to him in that aspect is. Is that something that you heard from him when you were when you were coming here? Yeah, I've heard from him, and like I said a little earlier, I heard from a lot of past players here. And um, you know, it, it's it, I feel like it doesn't get as much recognition as as what I've heard from all these guys. And uh, it really made us excited. We were really excited about uh, you know choosing Columbus and coming here, and uh, we're really looking forward to to start the season off and get going. All right, I think that'll do it now for Yarmo and Johnny. Thank you, guys. Class Brad Larson, our head coach, to come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we got a question for Lars. Please raise your hand. Sorry, we're there in Portsmouth. Hey, Brad, can I get your lines for opening night? Uh, you, uh, they're not done yet. Yeah. I'm going to get through July here first. We'll, we'll see. Um, seriously, I'm sure you've got some combos and some pairs and, and such going through your brain. What does this signing allow you to do, adding an elite playmaker? Yeah, I mean, it's the obvious, right? He's an elite player. He's established. Uh, he's been a producer his whole career. Um, you know, you almost touched on it. It's when a name like that comes up, there's only very few opportunities to get at somebody like that. And, you know, his will to want to come here. We know how important that is and, and what it means to Columbus, uh, the city. And so you, you, there's a lot of factors that go in it. I think you know, his skill set is rare, what he does at pace and, and the way the NHL is played now. Um, you know, Everybody talks about his lack of size, but I think he's been doing a pretty good job of lacking that uh, or uh, managing that situation and, and doing it at a very high level. So. His speed, his, his ability to make plays at high speed, he instantly makes your power play better. I mean, there's all these things that run through your head. As far as combos, you know, we'll see. We'll, it, you know, you, we joke about it, but it's going to take a little bit of time until we see how it settles out, and then we'll start working on that. But we have some real good players here. There's a lot to be excited about, and he just adds to that process for us. Next, go to Brian Hedger. Go ahead, Hedge. Hey, Brad. Uh, obviously, that the relationship between coach and player, especially when it's somebody who, who could impact your, your season as big as this guy. Uh, those are important, obviously. Uh, did, how much of a chance did you kind of get a chance to talk with Johnny? Uh, did you get a chance to talk with him at all uh, before the signing, just to kind of explain you know, what your systems are, just, you know, things like that, what you guys expect? I guess. Zero conversation so far. Uh, nothing. I, I don't think guys make decisions on what system you're playing. I really don't. I think you heard him. I mean, it, it, it's a much bigger picture than that. He's, he's starting a young family. It, it's, you know, every, everybody wants to put words in their mouth and make a big story out of something. You know, he's leaving Calgary, and you can tell it was a, an important place in his life, and, and he made a decision to leave. And some, some people are going to be upset at that. They get mad. But um, just like some of the players that left here, they all left for different reasons. And he, he, he certainly, we take it personal because we're here, but it was all different situations. So... Um, you know, he, he's, he's going to be a guy that, uh, you know, he spoke about Columbus a lot. He's excited to be here. We're excited to have him. It's going to be a real, it's going to be a fun ride with him. But as far as the relationship part of it, first of all, it's important to have a relationship to all our players. I mean, that's, that's part of our job. That's, that's something that I really enjoy doing as a head coach. Uh, I want all our staff to be part of that. And I got to get to know him. I got to get to understand him. And, and that takes time. Um, you know, we'll... I wasn't going to uh, bore him with conversation about system that they don't want to hear about that right now. He's got a lot on his mind, a lot on his plate, so we'll get to that. Um, he'll get to know me and I'll get to know him.
Next to go to Jared Smalley, back right. Hey, Brian. Uh, a question about, we understand the youth of the organization right now and the talent that you have in the pipeline here. You're talking about a player in Johnny who's not quite 30. He's got a little time before he gets to 30. So there's plenty of time in there where he's you know, in that prime of his career, but he's also had enough experience where he can also become a teacher in many ways. And I wonder how you want him to balance those roles, uh, understanding the, the, the young people you've got that are coming up who are gonna look at him as, like we were talking earlier, some guys idolized him growing up, sure. and now he's gonna play with them. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a different role for him. It, it is, you know, when you're in one organization for as long as he has, it's, and his role changed there too, you know, coming in young and working his way, and now man, he was a very important piece of that team. Um, I love that we're adding some guys that have some experience. You know, we're, we're a young team. We've been a young team for a while here, but at some point you need to start adding some guys that maybe have been around and have some skin on them a little bit and, and played in some playoffs and been through some battles. And uh, not just him, but, you know, Gabranson too. You know, he's a big guy. He's, he's a guy that we targeted early, and we're excited to have him. He's six foot five, 225 pounds, and uh, plays no nonsense, block shots, great penalty killer. Um, he played on a real good hockey team last year, and it was very important to them. You know, we do our homework on all these guys. We do. We, we, to me, character is so big. How does he fit in a room? In chemistry, we have an excellent room here. So the last thing you want to do is disrupt that. Uh, these guys checked out very, very well. Let's put it that way from people that I trust. So uh, it's exciting to add some experience because I think well, as a young guy, you're looking for guidance. And we, we had that shift in leadership in our group last year. Um, and it was a step for them, you know, from, from the Boone Jenners to the Zach Wierenskis, Bjorkstrand, Gus, all those guys. That was new for them. This is going to add to that group. And, and now you know, the group gets stronger. And the quality of people that I've uh, found out they are, it's going to be real good for our room. Let's go to Porty. Go ahead. Hey Brad, you, you've been on the other side of this. You know how Calgary feels today. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the Wierenski extension last year and now this decision, what kind of a jolt does this do for the morale of your, of your group in terms of the, the camaraderie of wanting to be here and, and sort of a sense of pride behind the sweater where maybe it was taking a hit for a little while there? Sure, yeah, there's perception. And, and you know, I've always said to our guys, I mean, whose opinion matters? Be real careful who you're taking opinions from. Um, Zach was a huge signing for us. We, we know what, how important he is to our team, his commitment to the team. Uh, Johnny making that commitment. He chose to come here. And uh, I won't get into the contract de details because that's on, on their side and how he did it. But the decision that he chose us, uh, this organization, this city, uh, to grow his family and really coming into the prime of his career, it's a big statement. It really is. And, and it shows his belief in what we got going on here. We're young, but I think we have a good balance of, of, of youth to now some experience and some guys in between. And, and uh, it's a real exciting time for everybody. And this is, this has kind of just been, you know, it, it's just part of the plan. Like Johnny's not coming in. He doesn't have to be a savior here. He's not coming in here to uh, carry this team to the playoffs. Playoffs is our expectation every year. It was last year. We fell short, um, but we did grow. We want to grow again this year. We want to try and make playoffs this year because that's when you get an opportunity to play for the Stanley Cup. He falls right in line with that plan. He fit into what we talked about. We have great communication with, with Yarmo and, and, and Basil, everybody, you know, about what do we want to do here, how do we want to build this, and he fit right into that. And, and a guy that is here long term, he's got a lot of good hockey left in him, and he's excited to be here. Brad, what was your day like yesterday? Um, go through, when did you find out about the deal? What was your reaction? 11 a.m. yesterday morning, you're on the ice with an 18-year-old prospect. Yeah. Seven hours later, Johnny's on your team. Yeah, that was a, you know, we signed, uh, got Goody down there, uh, Eric Branson, fairly early in the process. And, um, you know, he was the guy that we had talked about and we were able to get that done. So that was exciting. Um, and then, you know, we're not sure. You know, like he said, we're, we'll just sit and wait and see if, if something's available. And again, there's, they, these guys are really good at what they do. I trust them. There's a plan in place. And if something makes sense, again, for the process we're in and, and thinking long term here, right? We're not. We're, we're in a different stage with some organizations, and but if it made sense, and I'll back what Yarmo said, you know, you, you got to have an owner uh, that believes in these guys and willing to, to step up, and he did. It was huge. Uh, Mr. McConnell and Mike Priest and, and all those guys that stepped up and said, yeah, this makes sense. And so um, his name came up. It was a little bit later in the afternoon, 
and uh, yeah, I was super excited. I won't lie to you. I mean, again, to get a, a, a player of his caliber, um, and you know, I'm going to use this loosely. We, you get it for nothing, and I don't mean monetarily. We know what it costs there, but a lot of times you're you're trading draft picks or players or key guys. You know, to get somebody like that, you got to give. So to add a player like that without having to give up anything from your prospect pool, uh, your picks, uh, or a quality player, it, it's huge. Um, you know, and I think when you talk about free agency, what's everybody say? Well, you know, it's dangerous and you overpay, and I don't think that was a situation here at all. Um, you know, all, all accounts from when I heard it sounds like he might have left some money on the table. So it was a home run in so many ways. And for a guy like him to want to be here, that's I'll keep going back to that. We want guys that want to be here. They want to be a blue jacket. And uh, he's excited. He's energized. And I can't wait to sit down and talk to him about it, not about systems, but just get to know him better. And I'll take a couple from uh, Zoom. Go ahead. Nick Katsunika. Go ahead, Nick. Hey, Matt, I'm, I'm sure you don't know who's going to be a center, but what's going to go into that? Who, you know, what are the options? Who would complement him? What are you looking for as you uh, figure that out? Yeah, it's going to take time. I'm not going to get into combinations now. I think it's it's kind of silly. And, and and I said this before, chemistry is a funny thing. You know, what we put down on a piece of paper now, what we expect in camp or what we think is going to work, sometimes it doesn't for whatever reason. And um, sometimes the crazy combinations work out you don't even think about. So there'll be some tweaking. There'll be some, you know, you have some thoughts. I mean, uh, I think you most of you guys could sit up here and, and probably put two or three guys together. That makes sense right now. Um, so we'll see how this plays out. Um, you know, once, once our team is set here and, and once we get to the end, close to September and training camp, then we'll start to really focus in on that. One more we'll go to Mark Shad. Go ahead, Mark. Thanks, Todd. Hey, I'm Brad. Um, there's a lot of talk about um, the team having to possibly look to get somebody because of the salary cap or have to trade them off. Do they look to you at all for um, any sort of talk in terms of you know, decisions that they have to make or is that all left to Yarmo and crew? Yeah, I'll just coach the team I got. You know, if they ask me questions, I'll answer, but that's their job. My job is to coach. All right. Thanks, Lars. Thank you, everybody.